if you could just kind of introduce yourself um, and let us know a little bit about your journey of like college, what you studied, and then we'll go from there. Oh man, that's a whole lot. Um, I know. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Well, I guess the way that I introduce myself nowadays is um, that I'm Jeremy Miller. I, I live in Milwaukee, and um, I just love exploring the human experience um, and always having a fun time riding the waves of life. Um, I just graduated from UWM uh, studying history and religious studies. Uh, I graduated last summer, last yeah. summer not last spring, even though it felt like it. Um, and I, I loved it. It was a, a great experience at UWM. And so now I'm still in the transition phase of sort of figuring out where to go from there, right? Yeah. Uh, while all the long still going there, you know, I have had many there's along the way since graduating. Um, and, you know, I absorbed them for what they were, but then moved on to the next thing. And so now, like many other people amongst this weird, weird time that we're living in, I'm trying to find out the next, the next where to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I guess that's, that's a little bit of how I'd give an overview. Um, but to dig in a little bit more, um, during my time at UWM, I was really engaged with student orgs too. Uh, TEDx UW Milwaukee, that was one of my mm -hmm. favorites. Um, gave a whole lot to that during my time there. And then also the Religious Studies Student Organization, which gives an academic look into religion um, and many other different religions, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, lastly, being a leadership program assistant for the actual campus as a job. So mm -hmm. lots of fun stuff, lots of fun stuff. But yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything specific that you want to dig into when it comes to um, yeah, I'd like to hear more about kind of your transition from, well, I know a little bit from high school to college, but then also your transition from college to industry and like how that went graduating, what the job market was like, you know, if you had a job right away and just those transitions and like how you dealt with them. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> the transition from high school to college was, uh, that was a big doozy for me. Um, mm. I didn't really know what, what the hell was going on at all after uh, high school. Um, high school to college was a real interesting time. <laughs> I see my mom is here too. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> um, so high school was real, high school to college was a really weird time for me just because um, I'm a first generation student. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't know the process of going to college. Mm -hmm. which is something that I love trying to be able to help people with nowadays. My little brother being one of those, and he's been awesome. He's been a rock star in college so far. It's mm -hmm. amazed me, right? I think he was able to learn from what I did, though. Mm -hmm. um, and he was able good. to kind of build up from that. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, high school to college, I didn't really know what I was doing. Jeez, mm -hmm. even after college, I didn't <laughs> really know what I was doing, you know? Um, it, you know, it just keeps oscillating. But... Um, among high school, I just chose to go to Whitewater, Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. And I was freaking out as a freshman. I didn't know how the hell I was going to pay for anything. I was studying entrepreneurship at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lot of mental health uh, issues where I was just, you know, I was in a weird state. And um, so one semester into Whitewater, I was doing great academically right mm -hmm. meeting a lot of new people then i was also getting empirical entrepreneurial skills um <laughs> and i i ended up getting kicked out actually uh, mm -hmm. at the same time making the dean's list because i was nice. selling weed so yeah. not not good. the smartest moves right um but i was a smart kid and so i moved on from there um mm -hmm. and i ended up getting hit with a lot uh and that was hard to bounce back you know when you're a young kid it's mm -hmm. like okay where do I go from here now um so I got a felony as a as a kid at 18 just as a little freshman thinking mm -hmm. I'm just here to go to college to better myself and then I didn't know what to do right and so from there I uh that was in 2012 I didn't go mm -hmm. back to college in person until 2016 okay so there's a big roadblock there yeah big roadblock there. um and, you know, I just, 
hit my nose to the grindstone pretty much, worked away, um, got into full-time work right away as quick as I could and just got as many hours as I could. Um, and then down the line started uh, picking up classes at a local um, technical school. Mm -hmm. And then um, after like another year, started doing full-time online schooling. And then um, 2016 came around and that's when I went to UWM. Okay. Yeah. And so how, so you said that happened in 2012 and yeah. in those few years in between, um, how did you kind of work through that? How did you decide to go back to school? What was kind of the process as you went through that like non-linear path of, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of reflection, a lot of mm -hmm. reflection and a lot of um, asking myself, what do I want? You know, this mm -hmm. is the person that I am. What do I want from here? Uh, one book that really stands out for me that I got into was, uh, it was Socrates Wisdom by Ronald Gross. And I mm -hmm. read that in it would have been 2014 or late 2013. And, you know, Socrates is age old saying that a lot of people know is uh, to live the unexamined life is not worth living. And so that that really sparked a fire in me when it came to just living the observed life. And mm -hmm. as soon as I started to dig into that more, I got really interested in why is the state of the world the way it is? Mm -hmm. But more so I got interested in that question because I wanted to answer the question of how do we move most optimally from where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe in order to know how to move best ahead, you need to know where you've already been at, you know? And so with that, um, getting into that book, getting into Socrates mm -hmm. more and more and more, um, it just kind of got me fired up to just learn a whole mm -hmm. bunch more, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't an, an easy answer then for me to go into history and religious studies. Uh, but that naturally came about from that, I believe, you know, a couple of years down the line. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was a hard, weird time. You know, I think it helps, though. Honestly, like working full time can be nice because you can just tunnel vision mm -hmm. in on that. You know, that was easier than it is now being expunged having mm -hmm. freedom and not really knowing where to go right now you know um mm -hmm. it's almost easier to know i just have to do this and that's it than it is to explore and kind of build your own adventure up uh, mm -hmm. but having that adventure is totally worth it true yeah. true so um and then after you went to uwm and finished your studies how was that kind of leaving the education world and jumping back into the workforce? Yeah. Um, well, it was weird for me because uh, mm -hmm. what happened when I was in school, right? My last uh, spring semester, I started mm -hmm. working for my friend's tech startup, Spot Hopper. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome company. Um, really, really cool company. It gave me an awesome shot. They wanted to move to Milwaukee, their headquarters to Milwaukee. And my friend that owns it was like, I am so down to move there if Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy starts working for us, uh, which I thought was pretty sweet. And so I hopped on with them uh, in my second last semester mm -hmm. and just worked with them as a BDR, business development rep. And then I moved into an account exec position mm -hmm. after I graduated. Okay. Um, and so it was sort of a natural progression. I didn't have to do too much there. That mm -hmm. came, that opportunity came by way of me working with um, someone who was associated with Nico, the owner of that company, mm -hmm. when I worked at Bel Air. That okay. Was, yeah. <laughs> and so Bel Air, Bel Air, to dig a little bit deeper there and give you some backstory, Bel Air, that opportunity came by way of me, you know, in my earlier days of UWM, mm -hmm. saying that I wanted to embrace Milwaukee. I wanted to completely see what Milwaukee was and love Milwaukee for what it was. And so I just wanted to basically catch the vibe, vibe of Milwaukee. And um, I worked at Sendix for a little bit, then I worked at um, uh, Bel Air. 
And I would say it's the vibe of East Side Milwaukee, for mm -hmm. sure. That's what I'm talking about, to, to clarify. Um, mm -hmm. So I did that. I just jumped all in and busted my butt. And um, <laughs> then Grace, who works with Spot Hopper, that mm -hmm. is kind of my end. And that's where it always comes down to, you know, connecting with people who are awesome and mm -hmm. maintaining solid relationships, you know, because that helped me when I came out of college. But now, um, as you might want to ask next, <laughs> actually, yeah. Yeah. what happened after Spot Hopper? Um, yeah. And what happened after Spot Hopper? What do you, what's your adventure looking like now? Um, and just talking about like the importance of these decisions that you've been making. Uh, right, right. So uh, Spot Hopper sort of burnt me out. I think this is a big thing too for anyone that's mm -hmm. like coming out of college, right? Is that you might have a good job, but that job might just burn you out so much mm -hmm. where at the end of the day, you don't even have time to really work towards your dream or your dream job. And I think that that can start to be a problem. Um, I was working with the company for um, about a year and a half. And so I had a fair idea that, okay, if this is my job, right? But if my job isn't allowing me to work towards my dream career or my dream job, mm -hmm. and it's kind of straining my relationships because I'm so burnt out from it, then I think I need to find something else. Um, and so that's where I transitioned out, which was really, really hard really, really hard, um, especially if your friend is your boss, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wish, I think is something that people need to know living in a world that has so many tech startups is it's okay to just step back for yourself. You know, I mm -hmm. think the world is better when everyone is at their best. And so thinking ahead to what my best is, um, where I'm thinking of taking myself next is placing myself within a completely novel a uh, completely novel atmosphere mm -hmm. and moving out of country just so I can really see what I'm all about. See my biggest skills that really stand out. Um, again, meet more awesome, awesome people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just embrace something a little bit different and see what comes out of it. And so I plan to move out of the country at the end of this year or at the start of next year. And so my goals right now for the remainder of this year are working towards attaining that goal of moving out of the country, um, most likely on the start of next year. Nice. Just hope that uh, travel, travel totally yeah. holds up, you know? Yeah. So what do you want to hopefully kind of gain from moving out of the U.S.? Yeah. Um, well, to, to build on that a little bit more, um, mm. between my last spring semester and my last summer class that I had at mm. UWM last year, I went over to uh, Spain and Italy and absolutely loved it. Uh, mm. It was for about two weeks, and that's large thanks to my mom, too. Um, <laughs> awesome, awesome graduation gift that I couldn't be more that I could be more thankful for, mm -hmm. even more thankful for. I will never be thankful enough for that. It's such an awesome experience, right? Um, but nonetheless, I saw, you know, this different way of life that is incredible that people are, are focused on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing that I picked up, because again, I studied humanities. I love the human experience. I loved building out a more fuller picture of what it means mm -hmm. for people to just live an incredible, beautiful life, right? And so for me to go over to Spain and Italy, again, somewhere new, somewhere novel, um, it was great because I got to see, you know, people don't just live like we live here in America. People don't just live, you know, praising the almighty dollar, which is a good thing, right? It's money is value. Um, however, you know, in Spain and Italy, it stuck out to me that people love just having quality time, mm -hmm. quality time with friends, with family, eating good food, hanging out, going and seeing incredible things. And so I'm looking for more of that to further mm -hmm. incorporate that back into my own communities that I have, you know? I see mm -hmm. myself coming back to Wisconsin. And so with that being said, uh, I want to go over to, um, I'm looking at 
right now potentially um, somewhere s in southern South America, Chile mm -hmm. or Argentina, um, which I would love to work on my Spanish. So that's one <laughs> pra very practical thing I would love to get um, mm -hmm. is Spanish. Uh, but then also bring back different perspectives to my communities that provide for more filled out, more fulfilling human experience all in all, you know? I think about that a lot, you know? Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and going off of like all these experiences and all these transitions that you've had, what is maybe a piece of advice that you would want to go back and give yourself um, when going through it? Or maybe like a piece of advice that you would give your younger brother as he's about to go through all these transitions. Mm, yeah, yeah. Immediately what comes to mind immediately is mm -hmm. don't be too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm super type A, super overachiever. I always have projects going on. Um, mm -hmm. I know you can share similarly. <laughs> um, uh, and so sometimes just take time to connect with friends. Um, just take it easy. Check in mm -hmm. with yourself. Check in with yourself a lot. Um, because, yeah, you know, it's great to build up things, great projects, be part of great teams, do great mm -hmm. things. Um, however, you're going to be doing that in the best way possible when you're able to check in on yourself and um, see the picture a little bit more vividly, you know.